Okay, so I'm Gavin. I work on GameMaker, uh, senior project manager. Um, I've been with GameMaker for ten and a half years, nearly as long as Russell, not quite. Um, and today, what I'm going to show you is the basics of our new multiplayer functionality for um, GX Games, which is Opera's online um, game platform. And I'm really going to show you how easy it is to add multiplayer to a single player game. Um, so, uh, we're going to start with the latest, uh, maybe not quite the latest ver beta version of Game Maker, since there's a new one released today, I believe. Um, so this is last week's beta version. Um, what I have done is on the train on the way here, I made a single player game. It's uh, not much to it, but um, we have a nice little level here and a um, little character that you can run around and do a few things with. So you can kind of see it uh, here. You can run around. The camera doesn't follow him. Um, he can do some sort of attacks and he can interact with a few things. Now this is all really simple game maker stuff. All I'm doing here is setting some sprites, changing what they are depending on direction that the player is facing and uh, whatnot. We'll have a little bit of a look at the code just so you know what's going on in the single player game so you can see how easy it is to add the multiplayer to your game. So, in the, the object for the player, I'm setting a, a whole load of variables in there. Directions, states, um, whether or not the player is dead. Just a few variables that I'm going to use to change states later on in the game uh, for various things. I'm setting up all the different uh, sprites that I'll use for different directions and different states. Um, pretty simple stuff. And then I set up some sort of rudimentary quests in there. Nothing too fancy. Arrays uh, for the most part and uh, variables. Standard game maker stuff. Um, next we have uh, some uh, every uh, step things where you're, it's just checking to see whether the player is dead, changing the state, um, moving the player, uh, which uh, all it does is do some tail map collisions uh, in the, the game. Uh, very simple stuff. And if you've seen our latest uh, uh, project template, this exact same uh, code that's in Windy Woods, it's just expanded from being uh, side on to being top down. Very simple stuff there. Um, and then I'm doing some other stuff, basically based on the states upon different things happening. Uh, draw a bit for drawing, um, drawing some stuff up uh, to the GUI layer, depending on um, quests that I've put in there. Um, uh, collisions with other um, players and then just a couple of um, that's the collision code there, very simple very very simple, so somebody who's a non-programmer like me can do this very quickly and uh, that gives you a, a base for moving around um, actually that doesn't because I'm not showing you the moving code um, so the moving code is something that we really want to look at because multiplayer uh, is done a little bit different than um, as you would normally do, but also very much the same. So here's a typical uh, interactions. You check to see if a key's been pressed, you do something. Uh, anybody who's used Game Maker in the past will recognize that, and that's what you do as the very first thing uh, when you're making a Game Maker game. And that produces very simple movement uh, and interaction uh, with the game here. So you can see there, I'm moving around, I'm colliding with a tile layer there that's uh, drawn around some stuff. Like I can't go into trees or into a fence. Uh, attack and whatnot. All very, very simple. Nothing to it. Now, the next thing we're going to do here is I've changed all the input into a struct. 
Now, not everybody will do this. Um, it's something that is very easy to use, and you can see there, I've got all the input there, and I'm assigning it to uh, a variable within a struct. And then all I've done later down here is reference the temporary variable, it's variable uh, to see what's been pressed. That's exactly uh, the same as the previous code, it's just done in a slightly different way. So it's all collected at the start rather than every uh, if statement. And then what I will do here is I will delete that object and I will replace it with the one with the struct. So you can see here, exact same code. Um, once that move uh, starts up, you see it's doing the exact same stuff. There is no difference. It's all the exact same. But doing it with a struct is going to make it much easier to understand going into multiplayer. Um, multiplayer is very simple, uh, and you'll see that in just one second. So, moving to multiplayer, rather than um, create that struct uh, for the player, every frame, I just use a very simple command, rollback get input. Um, that's all I need to do for the player, and then in a game object, I define what that input is. Very simple, it's exactly the same, although you may notice for those familiar with GameMaker, I'm not checking for presses and releases. All this is handled automatically, you just have to put in what the standard uh, uh, key check would be here. A couple of other things that I'm doing here. Uh, I'm defining what a player object is. Now this is the exact same object as the previous ones, but it doesn't have that struct or key checks in there. It's just um, checking for the input that I have to find here. Uh, I'm then setting up a couple of other variables that I'm going to use in the game, and this brings it to an actual multiplayer game. Um, I'm setting a number of players that are available. Um, you'll see later on what Assassin is, and you might recognize the game that's been made uh, from other popular games out there. And then I'm asking to see if I'm joining a game, and if I'm not joining a game, I'm creating a game. And that's it. That's all I need to do for a multiplayer game. Um, there is some uh, witchcraft that goes on in the background where we handle everything for you. But if I come in here and I delete our player object and I replace it with the game object, it can go anywhere, it doesn't matter, as normal. Um, and now I run this for Opera GX. And what that's going to do is uh, the game object now creates some players and it'll create multiple players. You can see there it's launched and it's connected to the server and it's waiting for players to join. Um, what I'm going to do now is I have some other tabs open um, because I prepared some of this earlier. If I can find it. Okay, so uh, let's just get some fresh tabs here. Um, from this game that I, I launched already, um, we have some bands at the bottom when you're in Opera GX. The one I'm going to use here is Copy Share URL. This lets me test locally. Um, the, the game. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paste that into uh, the browser. And you can see there, a second player is connected, a third, and then a fourth. So I now have four players connected to my game. This is exactly the same game, but there are now four players. They may all look exactly the same. Um, but there are four players there, as you can see, and I can control them independently um, by clicking on the tab. It's all local tests, so that's, uh, I've got to switch between them. And one of these players is an assassin. I'm not sure which one. It's not this one. Let's see if it's this one. It's not that one. This is all random. It's this one. So this player has now killed another one. And you can see that player is now dead and is a ghost. And they can walk around and do whatever they want. Nobody knows what's happened to them. 
But our other players here um, can see that dead player where they were killed and uh, can report them in theory. Let's see if this works. And you can see my train art from the way down is very intensive. Uh, but that's the basics of a multiplayer game. Now that's all local, and you might go, oh, how do, is that really working? Well, what I can do right now, assuming this will work, and this is the uh, scary part, uh, I'm going to try and publish this online so you can all go and play it right now. This may or may not work. Um, so I have to sign into Opera GX. Hopefully this does it by itself. I already have an account, obviously. Um, now that's going. I don't know what the, the Wi-Fi in here is like. It may take a minute to upload the game. And that's it uploaded. I can now go to the uh, GX Games uh, website, the dev center for that. Assuming it all loads. Uh, I creatively named this. Um, but I can go in here and I can make this private. So, uh, that's one one bit there that I forgot, is that you have to tell the, the uh, Jets games that it is a um, multiplayer game. Now if I launch it, it will run as a multiplayer game. It was working on the train, so it should work here. There we go, there we go. It now knows it's a multiplayer game. So if you've ever tried to make a multiplayer game on a train via 3G, don't. Uh, it's not good. Especially when the train shakes uh, constantly. Um, okay, so here we go. I've now started a multiplayer game. The code that was at the bottom before is now here. You can see that that is an actual uh, web address. And if I open a whole load of tabs... So you can see it running. This is just on my machine, but you'll have to just trust me that this is over there. Uh, so all the players are there. They're taking a little bit of time. This is purely due, due to the Wi-Fi. The servers are actually pretty good. And you can see here that I'm, I can play the game. There is a little bit of lag, uh, but you can see it is syncing up uh, player positions there and these should all work. I don't know which one's the assassin again. It could be any of them. It's not that guy. Let's try another one. I'm not going to move them from the start. It's that guy. So he's just went and killed a whole load of them. And uh, the other ones can report. And that is the exact same game that was a single player game. I don't know how long ago because I've lost track of time. Um, it's now a multiplayer game and is on GX.games. Um, I would go into more detail. I would make this a proper game if I had the time. I, I, I wouldn't. I, I, I can't make this a proper game. I'm not a, a full time developer. Um, but it is very easy to do. Um, hopefully, this is showing you all a little bit of just how easy that is that a non professional programmer like me can go in and make a game very quickly um, and well, release it on a, a store. Yeah. Uh, if anybody has any questions, um, Russell will be happy to answer them. <laughs> That's my dog. He's not a cat, but he thinks he's one.